My name is Shane Torrios, Clinical Educator for Hayek Medical Devices. On behalf of all of us at Hayek Medical, we would like to say thank you. Thank you to all of the clinicians for your tireless efforts on the front lines. Every week, you go into the hospital to fight for your patients' lives as essential workers. As clinicians, we not only want to save lives, but ultimately improve the quality of a patient's life. How could we do this? For chronic respiratory failure patients, what is your first line intervention? Many turn to mask ventilation or a tracheostomy, but is there a better way? Please hear from some of our current home care patients using biphasic duress ventilation. Let's see how their life has changed for the better since using BCV. My name is Jamie Quist. I'm an artist here in San Francisco. I've been using the biphasic cuirass for about uh, five years now. Before I had the biphasic cuirass, I was tricked for about six years. So I've had health problems all my life, mainly with my lungs. I was diagnosed with restrictive lung disease when I was about 18 years old. And unfortunately, it just kind of got worse as I got older. Cynthia Cooper, and I was diagnosed with uh, Desmond-related myofibular myopathy. Between 2003 and 2019, I was a chiropractor. Previous to that, I was a microbiologist, a lab assistant, and helped perform undergraduate research. I was diagnosed in 2018, however, symptoms began 2008. What was your experience with the tracheostomy? I used to never get sick, and it seemed like every month I'm fighting some kind of cold or something. It's a way for germs to get in. You've got an open wound outside. You've got a permanent open wound. And people don't realize when it rains or if you, you're around kids that are splashing or water guns and you, you have to be so careful not to drown. It's, it's oh, and, and when I got the, there was so much blood in there when I got the trach change, I felt like I was drowning walking around. Scary, scary. The main drawback with the tracheostomy is that it's just not the way we breathe. It's forcing air into you rather than just letting you breathe passively. And so when you have a lot of the air coming into you, you get things like mucus buildup, you get a lot of infections that you normally wouldn't have to deal with. And so over this about six year period that I had the trach, you know, I was dealing a lot with pneumonias. I was dealing a lot with just small infections of the incision site, and just the daily wear and tear of it. How did BCV make a difference in your life? When I switched over to the biphasic cure S, you know, I didn't have any of those issues. My throat was normal, and a lot of the sicknesses I would get, you know, the pneumonia, colds, flus, weren't either happening as much, or they were not as intense, you know, they would be more just like a, a regular person would have. I think this has been a life changer for me. I was starting to feel pretty depressed and I'm, a, I'm an upbeat person most of the time, but I was starting to feel really hopeless and depressed that I would never have this trach out. And I know some people live fine with a trach and it, it doesn't affect them mentally the way it affected me, but me, I wanna do whatever I can. I mean, it, it makes me be able to live my life a little better, a lot better because this is a life-changing device. This made all the difference for me in what I'm gonna able to do with my life and spending time with my kids and, and being more independent than I would have been before. How many days after using BCV were you able to get decannulated? I was hoping BCV short-term would get me to decannulate, and it did. It did it quicker than I even expected. I mean, I expected maybe once I got the machine, it might take a month. I had hoped for sooner, but um, no, this was done. I got the machine uh, nine days before decannulation. 
Now let's hear from others that used BCV as an alternative to positive pressure ventilation and to prevent a tracheostomy. Uh, my name is Mike Polidaro and approximately seven years ago I was diagnosed with ALS. For 28 years I was a firefighter for the city of Pittsfield. About two years ago I had a bout of pneumonia and I was starting to feel I was using muscles that you don't normally use when you breathe. Uh, the ancillary muscles were starting to ache and during the um, diagnosis with pneumonia they noticed that I had a partial lung collapse and uh, my diaphragm was not functioning as it needed to. Okay, my name is Jacqueline Singleton. Most people call me Anne. I had, post -polio, I had polio at the age of 10, bulbar and paralytic from the neck down. I worked my way through college as a nurse and I had wanted to go into pre-med, but the first school I went to, they uh, would not give me a degree because I couldn't do the gym credits. Before you learned about BCB, what was the prognosis? The doctors told me that I would soon have to have a trach and go on a full ventilator and go into a nursing home. I'm not ready for that. Doctors had suggested putting a trach in and I had discussed it with my family and especially my wife and decided that I did not want to go that route. I am using it and I'm, I'm feeling the benefits of it. Uh, I, I just want to see it out there for everybody's option. How has BCV been able to prevent a tracheostomy and change your life? Before having the BCV, um, my energy level was next to zero. Um, and since I started using the BCV, I can be on the BCV, come off of it, go out and do things that I, I really struggled with doing prior to. Now my level of energy keeps me going for a little bit longer than before. And I'm doing some things that I didn't think I'd be able to do anymore. So having the BCV available eliminates the need for me to have a trach. So I am fortunate that this is going to prolong my ability to be around and uh, still maintain a level of comfort. But your device gave me back my life. And I don't know what I would do without it because it's my only way of functioning in a normal level. It allows you to stay in your own home. It allows you to lead a normal type life. True, I will never be able to do everything I would like to do anymore. But I have a very full life. I can do almost anything that, within reason that I like to do. And so it's really given me back my life. I'm not in a nursing home being sedated uh, with a trach and a ventilator, waiting for other people to take care of me. I can do it myself. This little old lady can still do an awful lot. And we're not ready to be pushed off into a nursing home or something like that for a very long time. Lastly, I'd like to share with you a case that's near to my heart. I received a phone call from the family members of Mr. Stephen Lufkin, who was a 52-year-old male with limb-onset ALS that progressed to quadriparesis and respiratory failure, requiring non-invasive positive pressure ventilation 24-7. When I met him, he had a vital capacity of 16% of his predicted value and his amyotrophic lateral sclerosis functional rating scale measured 9. He declined a tracheostomy due to caregiver burden. However, he did agree to biphasic cuirass ventilation. 
At the time, he was told that he only had months to live, and that was in October of 2018. He used the biphasic mode and the secretion clearance mode for one to two hours, twice a day, which allowed him mask-free time with his family and friends. As a result of his positive fighting spirit, the diligent care of his family and the BCV, instead of months, he was able to buy two more years with his family and lived until October of 2020. There is a better way. We can help our patients have a better quality of life. And we can make a difference in the lives of our chronic respiratory failure patients at home. Try BCV first. You may not have to do anything second.